click the bell icon to turn on notifications. In the previous lesson, I showed you how to create this very simple macro just to apply some formatting to a report heading. But there's something really important here that you need to watch out for. So if I click somewhere else on my worksheet, and maybe I want to apply this same heading with the same formatting somewhere else on this worksheet. So maybe down here in row 14. So if I click in row 14 and then run my macro, so let's click on our macros button, and I'm going to say run, you can see it looks like nothing happens. The only thing that happens is that my cursor jumps from cell A14 back up to A3 because that is where my macro ends. Now the reason why nothing's happened is because it's essentially just applied the same macro over the top of the heading we already have in this worksheet. And that is because by default when you record a macro it records using absolute referencing. Now, if you're an Excel user, you may be used to the terms absolute versus relative cell referencing, but just in case you're not, let me just explain to you what that actually is. And I'll explain it to you in the form of uh, formulas, calculations in Excel. So if I just click somewhere in here and I'm gonna type in some random numbers, let's just do a few of them. And I'm gonna do some more just here. Now, if I wanted to add up these numbers to sum them effectively, I could use a sum formula. I can select both of my numbers. I can close my bracket and hit enter, and then I can copy that formula down. Now, by default, these cells are using relative cell referencing, which means that Excel knows that if I drag a formula down, it needs to modify those cell references and move each one down one. So that's relative referencing, and that's the default in Excel. However, there is something else called absolute referencing. So if I, let's just type in over here, uh, tax, and we're gonna say 15%. So if I now wanted to work out what 15% of all of these numbers were, I would do my calculation a slightly different way. I'd still do a sum. I would say I8 multiplied by the figure we have in 07. But what I need to do here is I need to make 07 absolute by locking the cell. And we do that by pressing F4, which puts dollar signs in front of the row and the column. And what that means is that when I drag this formula down, Excel isn't going to adjust the cell reference where we have our percentage because we've effectively locked it to that cell. So that's the difference between absolute and relative referencing. And we have something similar when we're working with macros. So as I mentioned, by default, macros use absolute referencing. So that means when I rerun this macro, because I ran it in cell A1, it says in the code, always start in A1. And so it doesn't matter where I click in this worksheet, it's always gonna add this report heading and the formatting into cell A1. And you'll notice when we went to sheet two to test this out, again, it added it into A1, which fortunately in this case is where I want it to be, but it just means I can't really place it anywhere else in my worksheet. Now that's a pretty big limitation when you're working with macros, but fortunately we have an option that allows us to use relative references when we're creating our macros. And if you take a look up on the developer tab in the code group, you'll see we have a big old button here that says use relative references. So what I want to do here is record a macro that's going to use relative references to populate some departments and also some sales figures. So the first thing we need to ensure that we do is we need to click in the cell where we want to start inputting our data first of all, before we start recording the macro. And we also want to make sure that we turn on use relative references prior to recording the macro. Once I've done both of those things, I can click on record macro. I'm gonna give my macro a name. So let's call this department sales figures. I'm gonna assign a keyboard shortcut of control shift S. 
I'm going to store the macro in this workbook and just to save a bit of time, I'm not going to add a description at the moment. So let's click on OK to start our macro. So now I'm going to type in the names of the sales teams. So we're just going to say sales team one, sales team two, three, four and five. And then we're going to populate the sales figures for these teams. So 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, let's say 1,000 and 6,000. And I'm going to give these some currency formatting. So into our number formatting and I'm going to select currency and I'm going to take those decimal places down to zero. And remember, really important that when you finish your macro, don't leave your range selected because that's how your macro is going to end. So always click on a different cell in your worksheet just to end the macro. So that's that done. I'm going to jump up to my developer tab and I'm going to stop recording my macro. And if I click on my macros button, I can see my new macro sitting just there. So let's test this out. I'm going to jump across to sheet two. I'm going to click in cell A4 and I'm going to run my macro. And if you remember, the keyboard shortcut was Control Shift S. And there we go, like magic. Now, I used relative referencing. And if we take a look at this first worksheet, I actually did start this in cell A4. And I've also decided to populate this information in cell A4 here as well. So just to demonstrate relative referencing working, if I wanted to paste this information somewhere else on the worksheet, if I click in a cell over here and run my macro again, it populates elsewhere in the worksheet as well. If I click down here, Control Shift S, it's going to put the information in there as well. So that is the difference when it comes to using relative versus absolute referencing. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, isn't this one the most common? It wouldn't it be more common to use relative references as opposed to the default, which is absolute referencing? Well, I would say yes, in my experience, I tend to use relative references when I'm recording macros all the time. But there are definitely some instances where absolute referencing is the preferred method. And we're going to look at a few of those a bit later on in this course. But for the time being, the main takeaway here is that you grab the difference between absolute versus relative and you can create yourself a macro that uses relative references and then test it out on different parts of the worksheet. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project and Photoshop, click over there and click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.